first we had one night flight and in the simulator but it was actually a red eye flight <laughs> so we start <laughs> so we started at around 8 uh, o'clock so the briefing and everything and then 11:30 we were in the sim till morning 4 o'clock my god 3:34 i was god. like let's <laughs> Hello, hello, hello! Welcome to India's number one pilot podcast, and we are back again after about a couple of months. That's uh, because winged engineer had left for type rating on Airbus 320, and he is just back today in the morning, and yes. he is fully uh, charged up to you know get on the podcast. And yes, we are super excited. Welcome back from your type rating, which is on Airbus 320. Yes, thank you, thank you so much. So we kind of missed uh, doing this podcast, and I'm Absolutely. sure you guys have missed us as well. So basically, in this podcast, we'll discuss about the experience of type rating. So I've done my type rating recently. I was just, I'm just back today, and uh, everything is fresh. So yes. whatever I, whatever I have learned, whatever things I have done during my type rating, we'll discuss about it, and. Uh, you can ask me questions if you like yes, and uh, yes, if if you sure. are a cpl holder or if you are a student pilot who is undergoing training so the next step once you get your cpl is type rating so this episode would be really helpful for you and if you are an aspiring pilot you are going to get your type rating any day in the coming years so make sure you watch it till the end and if you have any questions you can let us know in the comment section Yes absolutely we would like to know your journey of type rating from day 1 till the time you finished your checks so how was it like lo so when you planned to go for your type rating mm-hmm. then you wanted to you know do all the documentation mm-hmm. process yes, and yes. all of it and that does take some time as well as um, now you have to when you started your type rating then what were the steps because i have done it like 8 uh, years ago so yes. there would be some changes or whatever that we would like to know yes, about yes. it the world is changing at a pretty fast pace so right now i think every day everything is changing so i think mine would be the latest data about the type rating so before starting the type rating so there are some prerequisites which uh, have to be done so uh, i don't know if it's applicable for all school but the school which i went to or the training center which i went to had some online lectures to be uh, completed okay. before we start the type okay. rating so, so that is their own system and uh, we have to attend the lectures online it's a uh, recorded like on demand lectures and okay, then okay okay like just like cnda <laughs> right <laughs> and then we have to uh, do some quizzes and uh, then we start uh, with the documentation work so, so what were the lectures about so it's so getting more on towards on yes. demand side these yes. days uh, you know you can log in and then uh, watch yes. these so we we had uh, basically created account just like cnd has and then we log in and then we continue with where we left off and uh, in those basics of systems were explained okay. so because we are flying a new plane the Got airbus it. a320 Got it's it. a huge bird and uh, they have system for each and everything so they have a separate system for landing gear then how the autopilot is connected then the engines then the apus so there's a lot of new things which you will be learning so to avoid the overwhelming during the ground school when you go to the training center it's better you study some basics when you are here so that once you go to the ground school you are prepared for it correct and correct. once you once you are studying for the prerequisite side by side you also start your visa process so for the visa process one needs a fee receipt so the amount or the fees of the type rating has to be paid before you even start comments yes so that is for the visa process and if someone is starting their visa process or if someone is transferring the money to the flight school it, it takes around 10 to 14 days for the money to reach their bank account okay. Be- because of the international transfer and the uh, rules and regulations uh, the banks have to follow okay, so it's okay. it's a long process and in between if any national holidays or a weekend like correct. saturday sunday correct, is correct. there then it delays the payment by 2 3 more okay, days okay okay, okay. 
So that is one thing to be considered. And after that, you get all the documents from the flight school. You provide the document to the embassy and you get the visa. Correct, correct. So when you get a visa and you fly to the mm. respective uh, mm. country, wherever you are planned for mm. typewriting. So you did your typewriting in Thailand, right? Yes. In Bangkok. So how was that facility and um, how did the steps of typewriting go there like for mm -hmm. example you have already done mm -hmm. initial understanding of the systems which is mm -hmm. a preliminary understanding so when you went yes. there then what was the so basically step? my start uh, my start was uh, pretty on demand i would say because right. what happened is i, I booked the flight uh, for I, I, my so my course was starting on 20th of april Correct. and i booked a flight on uh, 18th of uh, night Correct. So that I reach on 19th morning there and I have one day and 20th I can rest and Correct. go to the flight school. Correct. But then my visa uh, did not uh, get issued on the stipulated timeline. So Correct. I went to the embassy, I requested them, I have so and so flight. They asked me to reschedule my flight for 19th of April. Okay. So 19th April night, I took the flight and on 20th morning, <laughs> I reached, reached <laughs> there at around 5 a.m. Okay. So from there, I went to the hotel, took a shower, and it was time to go right, to the school. Right, right. <laughs> so that's okay, that's okay. how it happened. So basically, on the day one, uh, you are shown around the facility, like uh, where is the FFS and the ground school. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there is an instructor. They'll start with the day one. So in day one, you learn certain part of systems, the basic systems. Correct. I don't uh, actually remember what we studied on day one. Like what topic? Speed but general, but then the air general of Airbus. So general, it was it was general uh, Airbus. Like how many doors does it have? Then mm -hmm. how many emergency mm -hmm. exit? Mm -hmm. How many number of configuration? Correct, what correct. type of engine? Correct. Then okay. nose wheel landing. Correct, correct. So all the basics of the aircraft. Like what is the length of the aircraft? Dimensions. That's general. Uh, yes. Yeah. So it's day one uh, is that, and then. Um, once the ground school is done, around two, three hours, then you have uh, APD sessions, okay. which is Airbus uh, pilot transition okay. or Airbus training, uh, Airbus procedure trainer. So, okay. I mean, some people call it Airbus pilot transition. Okay. Some people call it Airbus procedure trainer. Right. Okay. So in that uh, first day, it was really good. Like, it, uh, I was like, how am I going to study all of this in one month? Mm -hmm. It has so many switches on the overhead <laughs> panel. It has so many <laughs> switches, like the lower yes. camp, this, that, yes. and so many uh, new things to learn. And uh, first day, it was overwhelming in the cockpit. And then the instructor started, oh, now you have to remove the QRH and you have to do the checklist to okay. start the aircraft. Mm -hmm. So we follow, 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 follow everything. And it took us two hours, two, around two hours to start the engine hmm. and then uh, line up on the runway right. okay so right. i was like oh now so then <laughs> so it's basically <laughs> first I, yeah. I was the pf and then mm. there is a pm Correct. both have to do this process uh, together. together so yes. pm cannot do pf's job and pf Correct. cannot Correct. Uh, intervene in pm Correct. Correct. okay so that was one new thing because uh, uh, this is a transition from single crew cockpit to a multi crew correct, cockpit. Correct, correct. So that was one thing uh, which uh, was new to us. And second thing was the plane was completely new. So now there's a switch of role. So now the I was the PF for two hours and the PM was uh, my training partner. Correct. So PF and PM was uh, done and then I have to switch roles. Correct, so correct. I went to PM position and I, uh, he came to PM. Correct, correct. So again, there is some new things to learn during that process. And correct. again, it took two hours to just line up the aircraft. So that correct, whole correct. process on day one is uh, kind of overwhelming. But eventually, five, six, seven days down the line. So what took us two hours to do on the day one now it is under 20 minutes correct, correct, okay correct, so that correct. that is True. what is uh, the uh, so training pr uh, correct, provided. correct. Yes. you get faster at yes. doing things and mm. then you mm. end up doing then transit cockpit preparation instead yes. of the full cockpit, full cockpit preparation, preparation because now you know about that what you are supposed mm -hmm. to do and then to save on time then you can do that way that is uh, one thing. And plus, you get faster mm. at uh, what you do it's and everything. procedures. So, yes. uh, the first time, what we do is learning. So we correct, are learning, correct, oh, correct, if correct. we press the switch, what will happen? Correct. And there are certain things uh, in the cockpit. So because it's a huge plane, right? So uh, like, let's say if uh, we click on the uh, electric pump. So we have to 
tell the ground mechanic that we are turning on the yellow electric, electric pump. Yes, uh-huh. yellow electric uh-huh. pump. Uh-huh. Yes. So that is some. And then uh, for the external power. So let's say we want to disconnect external power. So first the external power has to be turned off. Otherwise it can cause damage to the uh, ground mechanic. Correct, right. Correct, correct. So that was something new when we switched to a bigger plane. And so uh, initially 10 to 14 days. So in, uh, in the morning, two to three hours would be the ground uh, class to learn about the systems. And then correct, correct. four hours for uh, your uh, uh, APT, which is Airbus Procedure correct, Trainer correct, correct. or uh, Airbus Pilot Transition. Correct. So that training. So every day we learn something new. Correct. And uh, eventually we get faster at things. We understand the plane better. Correct. And it's a complex ac- aircraft. There's a lot of studying that happens uh, be uh, like outside of the uh, cockpit correct, or outside correct, of the correct. training center. So the preparation is the key to perform well in the hmm. simulator or even hmm. in the actual aircraft. So if you are prepared well, hmm. you can perform better and better each passing day. So learning process is quite mm. uh, tedious at times. You mm. feel a bit challenged. Okay, it is quite yes. uh, challenging and you have to really keep on working on your flows and mm. working on the steps and not to miss out any steps in between because all these mm. standard operating procedures need to be remembered and over yes, time, yes. yes, it has to be memorized. So even though, you know, you keep doing, but you cannot miss out on any steps yes. so that is one thing missing out a step can you know lead to certain uh, situation mm. which is not supposed to happen so mm. these are the things mm. so yes uh, for sure uh, you will be learning yes. your ground classes then apt mm. and then you are now in a position where okay yes. now i want to go to a Full motion yes, simulator. Before, before we so going before we go into the fuel motion uh, full motion simulator or fixed base simulator, so there is certain exams which we have to give okay, on yeah. the theory. Correct, so correct, every correct. week there was an exam. So correct. we gave some systems exam, performance yes. exam, then MCC, CRM. So basically in the APT we were uh, thought about the flows. So that flows has to be memorized. So there's before start flow, after start flow, taxi flow. So there's flow different for PM and PF. Absolutely. It has to be very quick because yes. once you, so if you uh, look at the real life scenario or the real scenario, when you're actually at the airport, once you request for push and start, you have around what, 15, 20 minutes to, for your slot to uh, push and start and continue. Uh, so the moment when you hmm. ask for pushback, hmm. you have to push back within five minutes. Okay, within of five minutes. the request. Yeah, okay. otherwise your pushback clearance gets cancelled. Okay. So it is uh, quite, mm-hmm. you know, it has to be done in a very stipulated period of time because mm-hmm. there are multiple aircrafts which have already waiting. requested yes. and which are waiting and there is a slot mm-hmm. and uh, the sequence of mm-hmm. the flights for departure mm-hmm. is you know, assigned and they, that is decided according to the pushback and then taxi clearance. So that's the reason why it mm. is important that you don't delay, delay it, it until and you actually... And you back. request for pushback when you are ready. Yes. Not yes. like the cargo door, the cabin door is yes, open and yes, you request yes. for pushback. Yes. Yes. So that was one of the thing uh, that they simulate each and everything of this. The cargo door is open, then right. your cabin door is open and everything. Correct, correct, correct. So then we, uh, yeah. So basically in the APT, all of this is thought. The correct, sequence correct, is correct, thought. Correct, like correct. When do you ask for pushback? When do you ask for uh, IFR clearance right. and stuff? Correct. So that all is done in the APT. The SOP and everything is done in there. Correct. And then you give certain exams, performance exam and uh, the Stims, technical exams. Yes. So yes. once that is done, then you move on to fixed base simulator. Correct. So basically, we start with the fixed base simulator. Yes. So in that, there is no motion. Yes. So you just take a feel of how everything works correct, in correct, the correct, cockpit. Correct, correct. So it is the same level D hmm. simulator, yes. but motion is not, not there, there in hmm. it. That is the fixed base simulator. Yes. So whenever in level D, hmm. if there is no motion, it is hmm. fixed base simulator. But in that same level D simulator, if hmm. motion is there, then it is full flight simulator FFS. Yes. So in that case, uh, you actually get the feel and there are hydraulics uh, which hmm. are there for that simulator, which will give you feel of being in hmm. the actual aircraft. So 
that's uh, the so thing. So fixed base simulator, we had around uh, five sessions. So right. it teaches us multi crew coordination Correct. because in that we actually take off and we do the approaches Correct. and. Uh, some failures and then there is ecam actions for Correct. each and every emergency Correct. so in those first five we learn about that and uh, once we so each and everything each and every uh, session we have to perform to pass it Correct. 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 once the five session is completed then we move on to the fli uh, full flight mm -hmm. simulator mm -hmm. Correct. Correct. so and uh, so it depends on the training center Correct. what is the portion because the cost of TR, which we will talk about later uh, in the podcast, but the cost of type rating depends on the number of simulator sessions. Correct, correct. Okay, and each simulator session has uh, different topics to cover. Correct. So one handy tip is like before you start the type rating or before you start your uh, FPS or FFS sessions, generally the training center will provide you a TCO, training correct. curricular outline. Correct. So you know beforehand what you are going to do. Correct. So let's say in one of the simulator, you are going to do a FARTO, engine failure after takeoff. So what is the procedure for that? So Correct. one day before, let's say tomorrow I have SIM. So one day before that, I go to the FCOM, I see the procedure. Correct. I Correct. go to the airlines uh, uh, FCTM Correct. and Correct. see what is the procedure Correct. for a FARTO. And then I memorize it. So that Correct. once I go to the full flight simulator, I don't waste my time or the instructor doesn't waste time teaching me the procedure. Correct, I correct, already correct. know the procedure. Correct. So what I have to do is I have to go there. I have to perform. So correct. first it will be an experience like, oh, this is what I have to do. Correct, and correct. in the second one, you do it perfectly. Correct, and then correct. you move on to the next correct, procedure. Correct. So in that, there would be, uh, in the CBTs, there would mm. be the procedures, what PF yes. has to do, the actions, yes. uh, what you are mm. supposed to do with the pitch, with the rudder and trim, and yes. then stabilize the aircraft and what PM would do, mm. all those things, right? So then you know the basic overview mm. of how you are supposed to handle and then you yes. perform it over there. Great. So that is awesome. very helpful uh, during the correct, full correct. flight simulator. Correct. So and... Once you are in, so once you start the fixed base simulator or the full flight simulator, there is no time. Correct, like correct. I used to get time during my ground school uh, to uh, visit places or go out for dinner and everything. Correct, correct. But once this FFS or FBS has started, every day there is something new. Correct, okay. Correct, so correct. for that, let's say there is dual hydraulic failure. So I have right. to revise my hydraulic system. Correct. Then I have to see, okay, green and blue hydraulic failure. Okay, blue and yellow hydraulic correct, failure. Correct, okay, correct, green and correct, yellow hydraulic correct, failure. Correct, correct. So there are three types of failure. Okay, so I have to go through it and it consumes like four to five hours and you you won't know where did the time go. Correct, correct, and correct, it's time correct, to sleep correct, and next correct, day it's time correct, for the correct, same. Correct. So yes. uh, literally for the full flight simulator and FBS, there was no time. So the last 10 to 15 days of the training, disconnected from the world. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, disconnected from the world and then uh, you are having meals what one or two meals whatever you order <laughs> on the so in thailand there is grab app so you order from that or there, there used to be some people who used to deliver food to okay, the hotel okay, indian okay, food okay, okay. so yeah you just rely on uh, that food and all you do is studying 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 correct, and then correct, you correct. also have to st sit with the training partner correct, sit with correct, your training correct, partner correct, same, part mm -hmm. same partner to See if both of you are on the same, same page with correct, the standard correct, calls, correct, with correct, the procedures, correct. because both have to, in that sync. yes, both have to be in sync. It, 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 it's not like one person will study <laughs> everything and he yes. will only do it. That's yeah. not like that. Both person have both to study, have to be. both person should know what they are doing and then you can move Because on. one person hmm. cannot handle all the emergencies yes. and fly the aircraft hmm. also as well as do yes. the procedures also with the ECAM hmm. actions and all of it. Yeah, it is uh, both pilot, two crew hmm. cockpits, so both should be in coordination. Yes, for your information, the green, the blue and yellow, these are the names of the hydraulic systems on yes. Airbus 320. Okay, so yeah, that's about the names, basically. These yes. green hydraulic system supplied by one of the engine, yellow supplied by the another, and even there are other means to supply power to mm. that hydraulic system. So this so is just for yes. your information. There is a lot of details on the FCOM. Basically, FCOM is like a manual of Airbus A320 in simple yeah, yeah. terms. Yeah, it yeah, is yeah. everything from A to Z about the Airbus A320. 
it's a 7000 more than 7000 page book i guess uh, so the thing is uh, now depending on how many types of variants that yes. airline has yes, yes. the vary the pages would vary okay. so if you have multiple engine types and multiple mm. types of mcu and the systems so like for example there could be Thales, uh, or there could be Honeywell M- FMS. Okay. If there are various engines, like for example Pratt and Whitney, or CFM, or IA engine, or Leap uh, engine. So depending mm. on that, uh, the number of pages would uh, vary. And uh, there is master a uh, book which is called as AFM Air Craft Flight Manual, okay. and that is that takes precedence over FCOM. Okay. FCOM has a lot of information. Yes. but if there is any conflict information with afm and fcom then afm takes precedence so okay. that's uh, how it goes mm-hmm. there are various manuals there mm-hmm. are various uh, you know information then mm-hmm. there will be company manuals so you need to know like so many things you are there reading and then what takes precedence if there is any mm-hmm. conflicting information so Yeah. So one thing I have noticed is in our pilot's career, it's all about learning. It's all about studying. A lot then of studying. Exams. Yes. <laughs> so it it never basically stops. So yes. now it's type rating, right? So once type rating is done, then now uh, I'll submit my documents uh, for the uh, conversion of my CPL into correct, the TR correct, to get correct, the TR correct, endorsement. Correct, correct. And then again, I uh, join the airline, and again I start with the airline uh, training process, correct, which will correct, uh, correct. continue for around three to six months. Correct, correct. And in that, I learn the company's procedures, and I have to visit the base and uh, all the ditching exercises and uh, firefighting, firefighting, ditching, and smoke. then they take to all the uh, different. Uh, departments of the airline and then you actually go to dispatch and you see the uh, like the number of passengers the your weight your fuel because in simulators a fuel and everything is uh, con- not considered that much because it's just a simulator so all the things related to like fuel calculations they have already given yes. you certain mm. data on yes. Uh, yes, yes, yes. fuel weight as mm. well as take off weight and speeds so mm. some part of it is taken care mm. in the beginning so when you will be flying on the actual aircraft that time you will have this additional things to do as well mm. other than what you have learned in the type rating so that so will be thought added the, yeah. yes that yes. will be thought during the airline training uh, yes that's right yes uh, moving back to the ffs so once the ffs is done so it's it's a uh, lot of things to consider during the F- ffs and emergency so yes the most important thing is situational awareness and uh, everyone must have heard like aviate navigate communicate which is for boeing but for the airbus it's fly navigate, navigate and communicate, communicate. And so monitor, monitor. Yes. yes so that is the thing we follow during the emergency correct, and correct. a lot of emphasis has been made on that yes because you need to know where you are flying absolutely it's not like you're going you anyway. have an emergency <laughs> and you are going <laughs> in the sea and <laughs> you are doing the ecam action yes, everything correctly yes, but yes. you are in in middle of the sea so yes so a situational awareness is uh, one of the yes. uh, most important thing competencies so yes. there are various competencies uh, mm. which are considered like mm-hmm. if you might have seen one of your forms in that there would be application of procedures then yes. flight path management uh, mm. automatic flight path management manual communication mm. then your workload management mm. situational awareness yes decision making yes so these are the th- things uh, which are taken into account and then they grade you based on your mm. performance in each aspect so that's uh, how it goes so once all the ffs uh, sessions are done then it's time for the skill test so we have two skill test uh, skill test day and then night skill test with ir if you are doing your type rating outside india is important to do all the things which are required by dgca in your day and night skill test okay so we we had a couple of things to do during our day and skill night test but the preparation for the check is like all the emergencies from ffs uh, from fbs 1 till the end you have to memorize everything all the standard calls all the uh, call outs for each and every maneuver you have to remember the procedure for each and everything yes and then 
you have to perform that thing in the check correct 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 so basically all memory items yes. need to be known hmm. as well as engine failure in various stages of flight so hmm. and then there will be abnormal procedures which are covered yes, yes, so definitely the procedures are laid down in the checklist it mm. is not uh, all the mm. abnormal procedures are not memory items you have to refer to QRH but you QRH. will need to mm. qrh or fcom or yes, and then yes. you will need to uh, follow those steps so but there are some peculiar things with mm. respect to every failure which you yes. need to know uh, no, and yes. that will he make the things much more easier so if you know that's good and that will uh, you know streamline the process a bit yes. so so basically uh, just to give you a heads up what happens in the check right so basically it would be a loft flight so let's say right. from uh, chennai to bangalore and then you do your uh, like the push back then your clearance then your taxi it's actual taxi okay hmm. so the first time i sat on the ffs i was like wow so you just throttle and you feel the uh, runway the tires yeah, are yeah, moving yeah. and correct, i correct. was I, i couldn't stop smiling i was like wow this is happening for <laughs> real <laughs> <laughs> then uh, there's a tiller to uh, steer the nose wheel correct, so correct. initially i in the first time like i i so i wanted to turn right so i moved it full to the right and it was like <laughs> job directly and the instructor was like you have to do it very smoothly gently. like yeah you gently have to yes handle her with care yes. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be very gentle with her yes so that's yeah. how you learn right yeah. so uh, because the f- in, in the uh, apt there's no tiller right correct, it's it's correct, uh, just correct, the correct. joystick right right so yeah so side that's stick. side it's stick it's no longer Not a joystick, a joystick. Yeah, side stick <laughs> correction side, side stick, stick. <laughs> so yeah. yeah so yeah and then you taxi all the way to the run holding point so basically you get a gate as well and then you taxi all the way to the run holding point and then you depart and then there's something on the way like some emergency or something then some abnormal, some procedure. abnormal mm-hmm. procedure and then you have to decide either you continue you divert or you return back correct 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 okay so that is some like fodac briefing the nights briefing so that is a part of the training okay we won't go into uh, the technical terms but that is what happens actually in the flight so flying the plane is easy okay i okay. mean uh, one two three flights you understand the system you understand the autopilot you l- learn how to insert the flight plan then flying a plane is easy you just have to set airbus does a great job Correct, flying correct. the plane okay Definitely. we just have to sit yes. and monitor from time to time right okay but in case of emergency okay the pilot has to take quick informed decision and that decision has to be right correct. so for that we are trained each and every time absolutely so, so if you see the pilot training so whenever we go for training what it is it's just the emergencies no one will say okay let's uh, fly on heading 050 mm-hmm. <laughs> let's fly on heading 05 okay correct, descend to flight level 20 it's not it's always emergencies right so that's no, what we are trained for yes all, always yeah. abnorm- abnormal abnormal procedure so in case of any abnormal event or any emergency a pilot should able to handle it correct correct okay so that is all about the check so once you clear the check it's a sign of relief you feel so good that now <laughs> you are a320 type rated yeah, now yes. you will actually fly the big jets correct correct okay. correct So at my time uh, this was back in the year 2015. Okay. So uh, we completed me and my same partner uh, I did this in uh, CAE Bangalore. So we were assigned that particular uh, type rating training organization back then. And uh, when we completed then we were quite excited for the checks but for some reason the examiner was not uh, allotted and it was taking a lot of time because mm-hmm. that time there was a lot of training happening so the airline examiners were doing mm-hmm. the checks for their line pilots the one who are actually mm-hmm. flying and they were there were no examiner available so we waited after two months of type rating we waited for another two months mm-hmm. for our checks to happen and it happened for some reason on the day of my birthday wow. and <laughs> that was 
kind of a gift to me. Oh my God, I completed the uh, typewriting check and that too at 12 at night. Wow. <laughs> you know, that was the time when That's it the best started. Yes, yeah, start started the, the check and then it got over in the morning at six o'clock. So it was there through night. The check wow. went on the whole night from 12 to six. So basically, as you know, one hour mm. is, uh, you know, briefing thereafter yes, yes, two yes. and a half hours each for each crew member. So mm -hmm. two and a half hours and two and a half hours. So five hours there. And then we have, uh, you know, another debriefing session so then mm. total of seven hours so yes. <laughs> it is a, a long process but then yes uh, on the day of my birthday in the morning was uh, mm. done with the check final check and I cleared it so it was I was so excited to fly and get on this 320 back then that mm. uh, it was quite uh, thrilling <laughs> wow that's the yeah. best birthday gift I would say uh, yes. like getting your check done yeah, during your birthday right. So for us, we had one night flight and in the simulator, but it was actually a red eye flight. <laughs> so we start <laughs> so we started at around uh, eight o'clock. So the briefing and everything, and then eleven thirty we were in the sim till morning four o'clock. My God, three thirty four. I was God. like, the instructor <laughs> is like, it's aviation now. Yeah, you have to be up twenty four by seven. There's no morning, there's no night, Absolutely. there's a simulator, so, okay. But it didn't feel like, uh, it was the first night fl uh, red-eye flight, I would say, in the simulator, though it was in the simulator. But uh, you're so focused in the flying, yes, yes, okay, you yes. don't feel where that four hours went, where that five hours went, because you have to be always on your toes, that something is uh, correct, correct, uh, correct. in the training, it's abnormal correct, correct. Uh, procedures. Right. So literally didn't fail but once the sim session <laughs> was finished yes. it's like direct crashing yes. right to the hotel directly crashed yes. on the bed yes. and then woke absolutely. up at around 10 11 in the morning absolutely so because you are occupied in doing so many things mm -hmm. there that you don't feel you know you are drowsy sleepy, or yeah. sleepy unless you have a lower workload time mm -hmm. at that point but uh, in a sim, that point doesn't happen. Yes, there's <laughs> you are always, always doing something load, or yes. other. So, so that is about the checks, yes. Correct, correct. If you're sitting idle, mm. that means you should know you're missing out on something. Yes, <laughs> that, that is, is the most, uh, <laughs> this thing. So uh, whenever we are doing a cross-country flight yeah. and uh, the aircraft is climbing oh. and then there's nothing going on, then that's that's <laughs> the one thing that come into the mind. Oh, am I doing something wrong? Am I is there something I'm missing? <laughs> Why am I not busy? <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah right, uh, right. most most of the time you have completed everything and uh, you're just mm. climbing to the flight level allotted, allotted by the right, air traffic right. control. But the moment that point happens, some or the other <laughs> yes, something <laughs> will come up. Will come up. Yes. yes, yes. So coming to the cost, uh, so. How much you ended up spending on the typewriting? Because uh, mm -hmm. it varies. Many people have this question in the mind that how much does it cost? Yes. At some places mm. it costs 12 lakhs. At some place, places it costs 15 lakhs. At mm. some places 25, some places 30. So yes, it yes. Uh, is different. So what is your... Uh, so we generally, uh, generally the cost. So for me, as I was a part of uh, the airline and I was under contract, the pricing for me would be a uh, little bit on the higher side. But in general, if someone is going for the type rating, uh, it depends around ten to fifteen lakhs they can expect, yes. and it depends on number of uh, sim sessions, sessions as well. Yes, yes. So if someone is doing flight, uh, if if someone is doing their uh, type rating uh, in around ten lakh rupees, then there would be less number of sim session compared to someone doing it correct, at 15 correct, lakh correct. rupees but if someone uh, so 10 to 15 lakh is the amount uh, to look for if you are going for type rating correct, correct. and make sure you follow each and every uh, requirement by dgca correct, correct. okay you will find it on the dgca website you can go through the car and uh, see it if your course meets the requirement if correct, doesn't correct. meet the requirement you can uh, ask the training center that this is what you need because once you are done with your type reading and then you come to india then and then no you submit your papers and then you come to know oh, i forgot to do this then it's correct, more correct, money correct, correct. it's about 75 hours of training so hmm. basically the more you do on hmm. the apt as well as the fixed base and then ffs so the more you practice, mm. you get better at it. 
Yes. Definitely, every session needs to be taken quite seriously, and you yes. need to perform it to the fullest so mm. that you don't waste the session. Because uh, training sessions are quite expensive. Yes, when very expensive. When you get online on actual mm. aircraft, yes, uh, it's a passenger flight, so airline is getting a revenue out of it, and you are getting trained on the you know airline mm. training. But at the same time, when it you end up spending. from your pocket for mm. the sims every session is pretty expensive so yes. it is uh, very important that you're well prepared before you go for your typewriting as well as in the session sim you should mm. perform your level best so that you make the most of it so uh what the reason and uh, some people think that if the typewriting is happening in 12 lakhs then why not spend just that much and mm-hmm. then why to you know go for something which is on a higher side so they should actually check that how many sessions they are getting out of it it is mm-hmm. if it is just the ffs then you know you may not even realize when those sessions get over yes. and uh, your training is just over and mm-hmm. you may not feel that confident to you know uh, once you're done with the typing so it's better to get as many sessions as possible so that you're mm-hmm. well versed once you're done with the typewriting yes so definitely just just keep in mind the dsa requirements correct, and correct. number of uh, sessions on average is around 10 to 12 sessions so uh, the including checks is about mm. 12 sessions okay so checks are day check night, night check, check night check combined uh, with IR, ir and per pilot proficiency check which yes. is ppc so that makes it uh, you know the two checks and then depending on the airline requirement you mm. may have the you know sometimes uh, additional trainings for additional uh, you know uh, procedures for yes. example uh, you if you consider low visibility take off okay. then that can have one session or you might do it when you join an airline depends okay. then there would be category 2 or 3 approach landings for the mm-hmm. lower visibility landings so that is a separate training apart from that there will be you know a mm-hmm. uh, certain rnp approaches or yes. uh, you know uh, mm-hmm. those kind of approaches will have one of the sim session so there will be these additional sessions depending on the requirement of the airline or depending on if you you know are doing it there the cost will vary so that is the reason why there is a difference in the cost apart from that um, the duration will also vary accordingly so because uh, average duration is about 1 uh, and 1/2 months and then if in case you add up these trainings it can go to about 2 months yes so maximum i guess is around 2 months, months yes, and it yes, uh, yes. depends on the number of holidays you have in between your in between. checks yes but you need some holidays in between so that you can prepare yourself well for mm-hmm. the next session as well yes. as you can you know or whatever mistakes have happened mm. in the previous session if you go through that and make sure that you don't repeat those mistakes mm. in the next session then that will make things yes, more effective definitely. and efficient so that's about it uh, now some students uh, consider okay you're done with cpl okay you will do f- typewriting but hmm. once you are done with the typewriting the clock starts ticking so it is important if a student or a candidate is not a part of a cadet pilot program because uh, in cadet pilot program the moment you have typewriting in the next possible induction you are absorbed in an airline whereas if someone is doing the type mm-hmm. uh, rating themselves and not a part of an airline in that case they should at this point be working really hard mm. in order to get a job placement so because um, and that depends on what aircraft uh, vacancy is there at that point okay mm. which aircraft is more in demand at that time like now if you see boeing 737 or airbus 320 both the aircraft requirement is there even for that matter atr so mm. uh whenever the type rating is over then you really need to again keep revising what you have done for cpl what you have learned for that particular aircraft specific type that is type rating studies then you might have to consider learning and clearing the atpl exams papers so that will also help those students to clear the airline assessments so once that is done and this crucial phase is cleared then as you are a part of an airline it's a great thing to 
field yes. so, so it's what uh, is the uh, validity of tr like validity yeah. of tr is uh, three years hmm. so that is the reason why i said that hmm. clock starts, starts ticking, ticking. Mm-hmm. because um, the validity is three years and within three years the candidate should start flying that aircraft online so because um, if in case a candidate is not flying for 12 months in that case they have to undergo three simulator sessions which is a uh, full flight simulator sessions okay so for which they have to pay and then if in case two years are lapsed that is 24 months are lapsed to mm-hmm. 36 months then they will have to undergo a uh, six sessions of full flight simulator and if complete three years that is 36 months are over then they have to undergo all nine sessions plus okay. checks so that makes it about you know 12 sessions so okay. uh, that means the entire type rating they have to do it again mm-hmm. so whenever if a candidate is applying to an airline then they mention a valid type rating so that is yes. for the same reason and then if in case it is not valid between hmm. whatever the day hmm. the checks are complete so the day when your irppc check is done that is a day from which the time starts okay, okay. so from that day it should hmm. be within 36 months max so, so let's say uh, if uh, so let's say after 6 six, six months right uh, after one year we have to do uh, three, three sessions. sessions yes yes so let's say one year has passed now we've done three sessions so yeah. now if the validate is now if you have done three sessions now your type rating is current then current. you can okay. continue okay uh, so every plan. year if i want to keep it current, current. so every year three sessions yes. after okay yes 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 so if you don't do anything mm-hmm. then after three years it will lapse okay so that's Got the it. thing so a bridge course if in case someone is already type rated and when you join an airline then there is something called as a bridge course so that course is a course which will train a candidate hmm. for airline specific procedures as well as the uh, you know whatever the mm-hmm. number of sessions are required from the day that candidate has completed the type mm-hmm. rating those sessions will be conducted mm-hmm. by an airline so that abridged course would also cost depending on when that candidate has completed the type rating maybe between 5 to 10 lakhs so mm-hmm. the depending on when the type rating was over so that way the total cost even if a candidate does it themselves then if it's it like 15 up, lakhs yes. and then this abridged course another 5 lakhs. to 10 lakhs 10, so it yes. takes it about 25 lakhs on an average so that's the how the rating. yeah for the type rating and abridged course etc so that's how the things go yeah yes so that's that's all about type rating Uh, so from my experience in the past uh, 45 days where i was doing my type rating it's kind of demanding so you need to be on your toes you need okay. to study every day and whatever feedback the instructor gives you most importantly work on it so that you don't repeat the same mistake again in the next sim and the next sim you learn something new then there's something you need to improve on which your instructor will let you know and then you are get improve on that so that's how Correct. day 1 Correct. day 2 day 3 day 4 and at day 45 you are good you Correct. can Correct. handle an airbus a320 a320 Correct. basically debriefing yes. so debriefing, so debriefing yes. we do it after every flight hmm. as well so hmm. in case if any things that uh, you know with respect hmm. to a flight hmm. if it could be done better hmm. in terms of fuel efficiency or in terms of uh, you know mm. safe conduct of the flight if yes. it is performed well then we appreciate mm. that conduct if in case there is any thing that margins are mm-hmm. reduced or safety margins are reduced then we do highlight that and make sure that it is not uh, you know it doesn't yeah. happen again so mm. and uh, yeah. yeah so basically it is when you do good you do appreciate each other and uh, if things yeah. are things could be improved there is a chance where it needs improvement then mm-hmm. uh, 
that needs to be highlighted yes well. and it is very important to take the feedback which is given by instructor in a yes. positive manner because yes. uh, the instructor is there to teach you so if there are shortcomings during the sessions and one needs to improve on that it is very important to focus on that Correct. because the instructor who is teaching is an experienced instructor he knows that this can affect the safety of the flight. This is okay. He's doing good in this area of correct, uh, correct, correct. flying. So he knows yeah. what he is teaching. So it is correct. very important to work on that feedback. Correct, correct, if correct. you do that, you're good. Your type rating will be done. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay. Great. Yeah. That's that's about type rating. And there's one more, I would say, one more uh, good news or one more thing that uh, many aspiring pilots were waiting for the cadet pilot program. Yes, and yes. that has finally resumed and uh, in the month of uh, June, this month, yes, and yes. there are assessments. So all the aspiring pilots who are applying for the cadet pilot program, now is the time you have waited this long for the cadet pilot program to reopen. It's opening. June end, you, have, you will probably have your assessment. So make sure you give in all you have. You have waited this uh, two, three years, whatever time you have waited. So now is the time to prove yourself. Make sure you give your 100%. If you have any questions, you can uh, let us know in the comment sections. And uh, study. Yes, improve. absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You, yep. have, you have any message for them? Yes, be very focused and uh, improve on your skills, multitasking skills, as well as you make yourself quite uh, focused towards your pilot training and to becoming a great pilot and understand what qualities or traits a pilot is supposed to possess and uh, you will do well. And just know that be yourself. If you are lying in one of the questions, it will be caught in the other one. So yes. in any of your psychometry assessments, be yourself and do not lie yes because the panel who is sitting in front of you they are experienced captains yes. they know in and out in two minutes they can identify a person so yes yes yeah absolutely yep yeah. that's a message from our end and wish you all the very best if you are aspiring credit pilot in the india's leading airline then wish you all the very best and do well yes wish you all the very best for all aspiring pilots and uh, that's it for today's podcast yes it was uh, great having you here and uh, see you in the next one bye bye bye